Well, hi everybody, and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. Today we're just doing a few odd jobs. Um, we've we've actually run into a problem with the engine or on the engine, where uh, there's a stud um, that broke when we were removing the front timing cover, and um, we've not been able to get that broken piece out. Um, in fact, what's happened is the screw extractor actually snapped off whilst trying to remove that stud. Um, so we've got a little bit of remedial work to do on that before we can actually continue with the engine. Um, and I'm just waiting for some tools or some um, bits to come uh, to help with that. So I thought in the meantime uh, we'd have a go at the, obviously the, this is the oil filter housing, so the oil filter goes on here. This is the canister holder, uh, and obviously that goes in there. Um, that's, I've, I've been soaking that in petrol for about two weeks, and I think I've managed to get most of the, most of the dirt out of that. Um, the interesting thing is that the, at the bottom of that there was this, it's like a fiber washer, uh, which to be honest I didn't even know was there, and then it kind of came loose and, and came out. So I'm going to have to find um, something that I can make a replacement from. It, it, like I said, it feels like fiber. It's not leather. Uh, it's more like a fiber material. I'm going to have to see what I can find um, to make a replacement for that. Um, but on the um, filter housing, there's uh, you've got the uh, obviously the 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 bolt, the long bolt goes through the top here, and that actually holds your your canister cover on. Uh, on the side here, you've got the bypass valve, uh, which is essentially this, and it has a spring and a uh, and a little ball. Um, and then inside that, you've got essentially the the adjuster. Um, you've also got a pressure release valve, which goes. Oh goodness, where's it gone now? In the bottom here, <clears throat> and that. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be a replaceable part, so I've just given that a really good clean, uh, and we'll pop that back in there. If you want to see how this all works, um, I can recommend the video by Bundy Bear. He goes through the whole thing um, and shows you how all the different bits work. I'm not going to repeat that because I don't see any point uh, in repeating what he's done. Rather, what I'll do is I'll link to his video uh, in the description below. Uh, so if you want to understand how this all works, how the relief valve and the relief, sorry, the bypass valve and the relief valve work, then um, I obviously invite you to go and have a look at his video. Um, and then, uh, but, so you saw me cleaning that, that's all almost ready for, for reassembly. A couple more bits to clean up on that, but also this timing, uh, cover, timing chain cover, there's a few bits on here that we can do as well. The, the main job really is to replace this oil seal, which we'll do in a minute. Uh, and then also this lever, you can see that runs inside there and there's um, bushes and, um, and to be honest this actually feels fun. I think I'm probably just going to clean this one. But again, I'll link to a video uh, of Bundy Bears where he basically dismantles this. Um, and puts it all back together again, shows you what to do. There's really not a lot to do on this. Um, I'll probably, I'm probably just going to clean this up. I'm going to remove this adjustment screw only because I want to clean the threads up and because that bolt uh, can't come past, come out past it. Uh, there is a, um, a Welsh plug over there which you can replace if it's leaking, but this one's not leaking so I'm not going to bother. Um, but that shaft actually feels perfectly fine in there, so I'm not going to dismantle that. I don't see the point. Um, there's absolutely no play in that whatsoever. And as I, as I say, it's not leaking. But as I, what I will do is link to the um, to the video where um, Lance at Bundy Bear does do it, so that if you are having a problem with yours, then at least you can see uh, how to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to give this a good clean. We'll replace the oil seal and then we'll reassemble the, um, the oil filter housing as well and uh, just run through that.
Okay, so that's all nicely cleaned up. Um, we took the oil seal out and um, we have the replacement oil seal obviously supplied by Anglo Agriparts as usual and as you can see the, the part number is A52683 and once again this actually comes uh, in the full engine rebuild kit. So we'll just give this a little while. It's not quite dried yet. Probably need to give my table a Okay, now <clears throat> we've got the, the new oil seal. We can see it's a compound seal, or what they call a compound seal. So there's a lip here, there's a lip on the inside, but the important thing is there's a spring inside there, and that always goes towards the oil. So we know this will obviously be the oil side. So we know, therefore, that that seal goes in that way. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, just put a little bit of oil on there. Just to help that go in. I just realized you can't really see this that well. Let me turn this that way. Hopefully you can see that better. You want to make sure that this is 100% clean. There's the main thing you, you want to avoid is any kind of specks of dust or dirt on that, on that ridge that the oil seal is going to sit on because obviously that will lift the oil seal slightly and uh, that'll mean it's a bit misaligned. So we'll just put a bit of oil all around that inner surface. What we want is we want the oil seal to um, to go in nice and smoothly. With our binding. So once again, spring towards the oil, which is basically up in this case. And then what we're going to do is gently tap that down. I can find my aluminium punch, which is a, you know, obviously nice and soft. here when it seats because uh, the uh, the sound of the banging changes becomes more solid and just check that from this side that all looks good so that's as simple as that that's the new oil seal put in as I said I'm not going to dismantle all of this because that um, bush all the bush the bushes for that shaft feel absolutely fine I know that that's not leaking, so we're not going to bother with that. So let's just get this cleaned up once more. Get rid of the excess oil. Not that it's going to hurt anything other than it will collect dust and dirt. So for now, we'll try and keep it reasonably dry. Good. Right, I'll get rid of that old seal. That old seal uh, works really well to support that cover while you're banging the old, the new one back in. Right, so the final job really is to put this um, ad, um, adjustment screw back in. Now, all I, the only reason I wanted to take it off was because I wanted to clean up the, the, the threads here because they've been over painted. Um, now I'm going to pop it straight back in. I've tried. I've made sure that that locking nut has not moved. So this will go back where in the same place where it was. There is um, a way to to measure this. If you watch the shaft, I don't know if you can see that. Let's just adjust this slightly. Yep. 
the idea is that as soon as this uh, touches that um, arm on the inside, we should get some resistance and then this should start moving. Which it isn't. Well look, I'm going to leave it there because that's where it was for now. Obviously we'll adjust all of this when we get the whole engine together and we start adjusting the um, the governor. So for now I'm just going to put it back where it was. I don't want to mess with it. But the important thing is that that thread is now loose. So when we need come to adjust it, we know that it'll it'll adjust easily. And what you can see, that screw comes in underneath the spring and essentially tensions that spring whilst that arm is sitting against it and that's what gives you that little bit of play um, or movement in, uh, in the governor. We'll explain all that when we come to um, assembling it. Right, so that, I'm happy with that. That can go off to one side now. So the next job is to reassemble the um, oil filter housing and I think the first thing I'm going to do is pop this uh, pressure relief valve back in. I might just put a little bit of oil on that just to help it down. And that, it's, it's just as simple as straightforward as screws that in. And it just screws all the way in. As I said, there's no replacement part for this, unfortunately. The only thing that you can do really is just to make sure that that ball inside is free to move. So there is obviously it's sprung and um, we just want to make sure that that can move as it needs to. Now you need a really big screwdriver for this which I don't have so I have to be really careful not to damage the um, slot on there Trying to remember how I took it out. I found something that fit perfectly and I can't remember what it was now. Just give me one second. Okay, I remember now it was my old damaged wood chisel. There we go. And that just needs to be firm, yeah, nice and tight. Nothing, no need to go bonkers on it and that just sits in there and it relieves into here okay so we've got that pressure release uh, relief valve in we're now going to assemble the bypass valve the bypass valve is really simple um, it's this you've got this tube and the, the uh, ball bearing sits in the bottom of that you've got a spring the spring is slightly larger on one side that goes towards the ball and then the, you've got this cap that, the, that holds the spring in this uh, centralized, but also it basically puts pressure on that spring. So from there, I can feel it's starting to squeeze the spring, and that determines how much pressure there is on that um, ball bearing at the bottom. Now, I've not moved this lock nut. I'm going to leave it where it was. Obviously, we can adjust it once the engine is running, but this adjustment there's a small amount of adjustment that you can make to the amount of oil pressure being given to the engine and again if you want to learn exactly how this works um, I would highly recommend Bundy Bear's uh, video which again is linked in the description now what I'm going to do having just reassembled that I'm just going to pop a little bit of oil in all of this just to lubricate everything obviously when this is up and running, everything is well lubricated, it's full of oil. 
but uh, we'll just for now give it a little bit to um, keep it all nice until we get there right that goes like that I'm not going to lock it for now uh, because no doubt we will land up wanting to adjust it there is a backup washer that goes on there um, and there is this rubber seal I've, again I've not managed to find a replacement for that um, I'm going to keep looking it's essentially just a square o-ring if you want to think of it that way and I'm hoping I can find one but so far I've not managed to I don't believe this one was leaking it looks to be in really good shape so I'm going to uh, essentially reuse it and um, no need to uh, to to oh well I'm not worried about it at the moment just turn that in all the way and then we can just tighten that up but essentially that sits in there and you can see you've got your um, bypass holes uh, uh, in this cavity here obviously the oil pressure is on that side and if it gets too high it the wall bearing gets pushed back and it releases uh, oil pressure back into the sump so we'll get that all tightened up um, and cleaned up now the, the only other bit is this um, it's unfortunately there's a fiber washer again that goes on there you can see that that fiber washer is damaged uh, there's then a concave uh, type of uh, washer that sits on top of that and then there's a spring clip that goes in there to hold it all in place um, I'm going to need to remake that again I don't believe that there is actually a, a, a replacement available but it should be relatively straightforward to make um, so I'll need to make that uh, as well as the fiber pad that sits at the bottom of the um, cartridge holder canister so look that's basically it uh, that's your oil filter housing obviously that now you get a you've got a gasket in your gasket set that bolts onto the engine and uh, sits uh, sits on the side there which we will do um, shortly but yeah look that's it for this video I know it's a, a, obviously a very short one um, not a lot of content in this one unfortunately uh, but you know all these little jobs need doing uh, when you redoing the engine uh, not just the big stuff and um, as I said with the engine itself we uh, we're just waiting for well, we need to sort out this stud uh, that's broken off, and um, we, I don't really want to go any further until I've, until I've managed to, to sort that out. Hopefully next week uh, we can get that, get that dealt with, and then we can move on and do all of the, the front of the engine, which is essentially all the timing uh, bits and pieces. We need to get the camshaft in and then get all the timing gears on. Uh, we won't be able to actually set the timing just yet because we need to have the, the flywheel on to do that and of course we can't put the flywheel on whilst the engine is on the engine stand so we will probably then move or try to get to bolting the engine to the front axle and um, taking it off the engine stand obviously it'll have to be supported um, but then we can get the flywheel on get the clutch on get everything lined up and then uh, bring bring the tractor in the back end in and uh, and reassemble everything one final thing uh, I just wanted to mention we uh, this is video number 99 uh, so this will be the 99th video that we've published on YouTube um, it's obviously been quite a while since we started I think it's uh, getting on for two it's just over two years now and uh, the majority of that has been obviously on the restoration of the Ferguson. There's been a few other videos uh, interspersed. Um, but obviously our next video therefore will be video number 100. And to mark the event we are going to do something special. So we, I invite you to, to come along and join us uh, for the next video. Um, it, I don't think it's going to be anything majorly grand. Um, but we definitely want to mark the mark the event, mark the occasion, and uh, we look feel, we look forward to sharing that with you. 
So look, that's it for this video. Thanks again for joining us. I uh, hope that that was uh, informative and helpful. Uh, more importantly, we hope that you all have a great week and we look forward to seeing you uh, next week on the next video. Cheers for now.